Hi everyone, my name is Dina. I'm going to show you today how to make my flames bracelet. So go to that list down below that shows all the supplies, which will include some storm duo duos and some seed beads. So gather those up in the different colors that you want to make yourself nice, warm, and cozy with this bracelet. Gather those up, meet me back, and I'll show you what to do. Okay, so to get started, we have our dragon thread size 8. I'm using the green color today because it goes a little bit better with some of the bead, cut, bead choices that I, color choices that I've used of my beads. I've got my three different colors of Storm Duos. You don't have to have three colors. You can have just one if you want to. I just have a small amount of all three of these, so I figure I'd get rid of these in a bracelet. So on the Storm Duos, if you're not familiar with them, they do have two holes. There's one down here on the bottom, one up here at the top. Then you have two different sides as well. You have this inner, more um, smaller curve is what I kind of consider it. And then you have the outer, more bigger curve or the larger curve. So uh, knowing me, I'll probably mix up the words a little bit here and there. So if I say the inner curve, I mean the curve that's here on the right. If I say the outer curve, then I mean the curve that's over here on the left that's going in this direction. So. Hopefully, if that gets anybody messed up, then hopefully you can go back to that part of the of the video and see which ones that I mean. So we have a stop bead, one of the eightos at the end of uh, my thread. I have about three or four inches or so left over, so that way I can uh, use this stop bead in the product at the very end, and I'll show you what to do with that. So to start off, after that stop bead, we're going to add one of our 11 O's. Happens to be in the same color as the as my stop bead as my 8 today and we're going to square stitch that on so I just went right back through the 8 going in the same direction and then I'm going to move up to the 11 so that way I can start adding on more beads I'm going to flip it to where my thread is actually is basically coming out at the top with the way that I'm holding it at the moment then we're going to continue to add beads we're going to add another 11 of 15 then we're going to pick up our first storm duo. I'm going to start off with the brown. I've got the brown, the copper, and then the cream color. So I'm starting off with the brown. I'm going to pick it up in the outer edge first, going towards the inner edge, or the bigger side towards the smaller side. And then we're going to finish this out by picking up another 15 and then an 11. So I have 11, a 15, a storm duo, a 15, and an 11. Then we're going to round out by going through that same 11 that we have here on our product that, that I'm holding. To continue on, we're going to go through the 11 and the 15 that's sitting right there. Then we're going to add some more seed beads in our next part of our uh, Storm Duos. So we're going to add three 11s. And then we're going to pick up our next storm duo. I'm going to continue on with the same color. I'm going to use three in each set and three of the same color in each set. But this time I'm going to pick it up in the shorter or the inner side and going towards the outer or the larger side. And then I'm going to go through that upper hole or the open hole that we haven't used yet of the storm duo that's already there. This is kind of the center storm duo. And when you do that, it makes it look like the two storm duos are kind of hugging each other. So we're going to pick up our next storm duo going in the same direction as this last one, so the inner towards the outer. We're going to pick up three more 11s and then we're going to go through that first hole of that middle storm duo that we went through at the very beginning. And when you pull that together, that makes that second or the third storm duo that we added kind of hug towards the middle one again. So now let's get ourselves set up to where we can add more beads. With that, we'll go through the three beads, the three 11s that are sitting here on the side. And then we're set up to add our next section. This one's going to be an 11, 15, and an 11. And then we're just going to go straight through that open hole of the Storm Duo. Oops. Now we're going to pick up our second color of Storm Duos. And then this one is going to be similar to the way that we picked it up in the first time. So this one's going to be from the outer or the larger side towards the inner or the smaller side. Then we're going to go straight through. Actually, no, we don't do that yet. So we picked that up. Sorry. <laughs> then we're going to pick up seven more beads. We're going to pick up a 15. We're going to pick up five, 
11s and then another 15. So we have 15, 5 11s, and 15. When we pull this down to the product, it's going to sit a little wonky at the moment, but it's going to work out. So just follow with me, I promise. So we're coming out up here. We want to go back down to that first middle storm duo and go through that first hole again. So go all the way back down here and go through that first hole going from the larger side towards the smaller side or the outer towards the inner. And then you want to pull it, but don't pull it too, too tight yet because we're going to go up through these three elevens on this side. And then if you remember, we added an 11, 15, 11 on this side. So we're going to do the same set, same thing over here. So add 11, 15, and 11. And then go through the Storm Duo that's right there, the brown one. And then we're going to go through the Storm Duo that we just added, as well as the first one that's sitting there. So you're going to go straight through all three Storm Duos, basically. And then just make sure that the seven beads that you added stay on top and don't kind of get in the middle and everything of, of the storm duos, then you're, then you'll be just fine. So now it looks like that kind of looks like a flame. That's why I called it flame bracelet. <laughs> so to move on, we are going to add three more seed beads. So three more 11s and I'm cheating again, making sure I'm telling you the right way. And then we're going to add the next one in the smaller side towards the outer side then you just go straight through your open middle open hole of the middle storm duo and now we're basically just repeating what we already did so pick up another storm duo going from the smaller to the outer and then three more seed beads then you jump down here and you're going to go through all three of your storm duos that you added just a minute ago when you do that, that puts your storm duos on like that with your seed beads. And then we're going to move on up again through the three elevens there on the left. Then when you're along the side of the storm duo, then we're going to add our 11, 15, and an 11. Go through the open hole of the storm duo up at the top. Now we're going to pick up our, our uh, third color. And we're going from the smaller to the outer side again, as well as our seven seed beads. So 15, five 11s, and then another 15. And we're going to go down to this uh, middle storm duo of this previous color. Go from the left side to the right side, or depending on if I'm holding it like this, like I'm doing right now, it'll be from the top to the bottom, but through that bottom hole. Sometimes you kind of have to wiggle it through because sometimes if you pull tight like I do a lot of the times, it might be kind of tight to get through. It will work. Just take your time. And then that sits that there. You want to continue through that next storm duo that's sitting there. So you want to go through the middle one plus the one that was on the right. So now you're on the right hand side, or if I'm holding it this way, this direction, you're on the bottom. And then you're going to go through those three 11s on this side. We're going to mirror what it looks like on the opposite side. So an 11, 15, 11. And then go through the open hole of that current storm duo. And if you can get through it, the bottom hole of the middle one, and then the upper hole of that last storm duo, or the one that's on the left hand side or the top, depending on which way I'm holding it. And I can only get through the two at the moment. So now I'm going through the third. And then just make sure your seven seed beads sit on top of the bracelet. And now you're set up to do the same thing again. So basically we're just gonna continue these steps mainly the second step all the way towards the end. At the very end of the bracelet, you want to end with just one middle um, storm duo, it's something similar to this. And then I will meet you back and I'll show you how to finish that portion off. 
Okay, so slight correction. As I was trying to move on with the bracelet, I realized I put this last storm blue on backwards. Now, even I get confused on which way I'm supposed to go through these things. So previously, I told you the wrong direction. So when you put your, when you get, when you get to the point where you're putting the middle storm duo on, you want to go through that outer or the bigger side going towards the inner or the smaller side. And then you add your seven seed beads. I had it on backwards the previous clip. So hopefully that didn't confuse anybody. If it did, I really do apologize, but we all mess up from time to time. So with that being said, you just continue on just like the rest of the, of the step and then meet me back and I'll show you what to do. All right, so when you're done with the bracelet, it should look something similar to this. And then here's where we started off with down there at the bottom. So up here at the top, to finish it off, we're going to make it look similar to what's down here at the bottom. So to do that, we're coming out of the left-hand side of the Storm Duo over here off the, to the left. <laughs> That made a total sense. But anyways, we're coming out of this bead. <laughs> we're going to add three 11 O's. We're going to go through the open hole of the Storm Duo. So it's going to be very similar to if we were adding another Storm Duo, but we're just going to skip the Storm Duo. We're just going to add the three 11 O's to that side. We're going to add three 11 O's to the other side. And then we're going to go through the brown one down here at the bottom. Go through... The middle one and through the one on the left and if you have to take it one or two beads at a time if your needle won't let you do it and one thing that I had realized in between the last clip that I did and then this one is that I originally was going to do this tutorial as a two needle project and not a one needle project so I think that's one reason why I'm having so many problems trying to figure out which way that my storm duos are going on my, my needle. So it is something that you can do as well if you want to use two needles. Perfectly fine to do that. And I am having a hard time getting through that one. Oh, that's what it's... I'm trying to... Try not to go through that 11 -0. That's what my needle is trying to do is go through that 11 -0 also. Okay, so now I'm coming out of that same hole that we were coming out of. So we're going to move on up through the three 11s again. And then we're going to put the little triangle shape up here at the top. So to do that, it is, uh, it was 15. So, okay. So we're starting off with a 15 and then we're going to do three 11s and then another 15. And then we're coming out of the left-hand side, those seed beads right there. I'm just going to go straight through the storm duo itself, just the whole of the storm duo that upper hole and then that puts those five beads there go back through your 15 and then the first two 11s that you added so you're, so you're coming out of that middle bead which is an 11 -0. there we go and then we're going to square, square stitch on another 8-0 so pick up an 8-0, and then through that middle 11, we're going to square stitch this on. I'm going to end up going through that 8-0 twice. You don't have to if you don't want to. But I'm going to go through that 8-0 that second time, and then go back through the 11. And then that's how you get that little triangle part to it. Now this next step is pretty simple. We're just going to go through all the beads over, along the outer edge of the bracelet. In some spots, though, you may have to add a couple extra beads. Really, the only place that I noticed that I needed to add a, a, a couple extra beads is like right here. You see where there's that big gap right there, which is usually just at the end, at the two ends. All the other ones were pretty close, close enough to, together to where even if I added a 15, it may be too much. But see down here? where there's another really big gap right there that I may have to add an extra bead. So just play around with it. Don't add too many of them because if you start adding too many, then your product's gonna start wobbling a little bit more. So just kind of play around with it and everything, but that's all you're doing on this next step is you're just going straight down the side of the product. And all we're doing is basically just getting another pass of thread 
through these outer beads. And it'll help kind of keep them from wobbling around too much. If you like it the way it is right now, then that's fine. You can just keep it the way it is. You don't have to go through the outer beads. But that's kind of up to you. But that's what I'm going to do on this part, is I'm going to go straight through the right-hand side of the of the beads, come down here to the tip, kind of um, make that 80 sit a little bit better, and I'll probably get rid of this uh, starter thread. And then I'll come back up here and on the left-hand side do the same thing. But like I said, if you need to add an extra bead, like in this spot right here, go ahead and do it. I just wouldn't add too many of them. But go ahead and finish that part and then meet me back and I'll show you how to make the little charm that we're going to put on the end of our bracelet. So now that you have your bracelet done, and it should look something similar to that, and I ended up actually adding, I think, two, maybe three 11 O's, and they were mainly here on the edges right here. So there was one spot where it was actually kind of tight, so I ended up not, not adding an 11 O. So that's somewhat what what your that was hard for me to say that should be what your bracelet looks like at the moment so now we're going to make the little charm that's going to hang at the end of our um, clasp and everything so to do that we're actually going to start with a 15 we're going to do three 11s a 15 and then just pick up one of your one of your storm duos it doesn't matter which hole you go through which side you go through first just pick up one of your storm storm duos through one of the holes so I have the 15, 311s, 15, and the Storm Duo. I'm going to go back through the Seed Beads and the Storm Duo, and then come out the Storm Duo again. So I'm just going to round it out. And not get your finger stuck in the thread. Alrighty. So when you get this all rounded out and tight, if I can get it tight. Man, I'm having difficulties today. Okay, it should look something similar to that. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay, so we're going to add three 11 O's to go from the bottom hole down here at the Storm Duo. We're going to go through the open hole at the top. We're going to go ahead and do the um, three 11 O's on this side. Go through the bottom hole again, or the first hole that we were going through. We're going to travel through the first set of 311 O's that we just added to get to that top hole again. And then we're going to add a 15 311s and a 15. We're going to round through that top hole. Then we're going to go continue through the 15 and then two 11s so we can add our 8 on. Just similar to what we did at the very end of the project and the very beginning of the project. So add your 8 and square stitch that 8 onto the 11 sitting there. Going through the 8 more than likely twice. You can go through more if you want, but sometimes it's kind of hard to get the jump ring through the 8 if you do that. So now you can continue on through the right hand side or the bottom side, just kind of depends on which way you're looking at it, because I'm holding it kind of diagonal at the moment. Go through those three seed beads on this side. What you're wanting to do is get down to this tip bead, so that middle 11-0 uh, that we added the, at the very beginning and then add square stitcher 8 on to that one and go through that one twice and then all I'm going to do now is just go through this side because we haven't connected all these beads yet so go through this side Continue on through the 15, and then just go through the 11 O's. You don't have to go through the 8 0 again unless you didn't do that the first time. But I would at least go through the 8 0 twice. And if your beads are getting kind of clogged with coating of the seed bead as well as with the 
thread itself because it is the thicker thread. You can either just wiggle your, your needle through or just don't even worry about going through these five seed beads here. You can just go straight through the, the Storm Duo here at the top and then go back around because this is where I'm trying to get to is where the starter thread's at. And then that way it's just a very quick, simple, put yourself a knot there with the two threads, burn the thread down, and then your little charm is done. Except don't get your thread all mixed up with each other. Like I just did. <laughs> okay, so now I'm to that point where I can just tie these two together and then burn them off and then that's your little charm that you have. So just in case, I don't know which order these bracelet videos are going to come out, but I have another bracelet that we're going to be doing something similar with these charms. So if it hasn't come out yet, then stay tuned. If it has, then great, you've already seen it. So go ahead and get this little charm done, and then I'll show you the last step to put your bracelet together. Okay, so let's put our bracelet together. So I've got the bracelet sitting here, my charm, the clasp, and I have a bunch of jump rings. I wanted to make it a, a an adjustable bracelet because sometimes with the lobster clasp, especially with me as well, have a little bit of dexterity issues from time to time to time. So it makes it a little bit easier sometimes if you have that extension on there. So if you don't get it just tight enough, but you click on a uh, link onto one of the other links that are closer to the size that you like, then it may, may not be too bad. Maybe a little bit easier for those that are have, have issues with dexter dexterity and everything. So all I did for my extension is I have 14 jump rings and it adds about, I think it was what, an inch and a half or so, something like that. Let's see. Yeah, it's about an inch and a half or so. Um, to the length of the bracelet. So just add as many jump rings as you want to. You don't even have to add any of them. You can just go straight on to the clasp itself. So to do that, my um, charm is going to go towards the front. You notice at the front we had the three seed or the three storm duos, and then at the end we had that one color of storm duo. Well, since there's just one color of storm duo here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it down here on the on the bottom, on this side. So to do that. I'm taking my extension ring. I already have one jump ring that's already open. And then I'm going to put it on to that 8 -o. that's down there on that side. So with us using four millimeter jump rings, you can use six millimeter jump rings. You can use whatever size jump ring that you want to. You can use ovals if you can get the ovals to go through your seed beads. I have problems sometimes getting ovals to go through my seed beads. And this one's being a little difficult at the moment as well. Let me see if I can go in the opposite direction. And I'm kind of shaky a little today too, so there we go. So now it's in there. And then definitely need two pliers for this because the four millimeter jump rings and see there I go shaking again. Four millimeter jump rings are very much harder to close with your hands or your fingers. <laughs> so definitely need two pliers for that. So then that is on there. Then we want to open up the jump ring on the end of the extender. And then we add our uh, little charm to that. There we go. That's on good enough. And then now we have our extender with our charm at the end of the bracelet. Like that. Now we're going to go to this side and we're going to do the same thing and add our clasp. So this one's already open again. And then I'm going to go through the other end. I'm going to add the jump ring first and then I'll add the clasp and hopefully I won't shake too much to where I just shake it off. <laughs> so, and as you can see, I am having a little difficulty sometimes trying to get the jump ring in. If you notice, I'm twisting the jump ring, so I'm trying the other side. Sometimes that's all you have to do. Other times, it could be just too much coating in the bead itself. And uh, sometimes that's a little frustrating, but you just have to kind of work at it and just do it slowly. And... 
eventually you'll get that jump ring in. Sometimes it's the jump ring. Sometimes you have to change to a different jump ring or a different, a smaller gauge jump ring. So now, see if I can not shake too bad. I'm trying to get, nope, see, shaking too bad. <laughs> Try to pop that back on there. <laughs> oh, the joys. Okay, let me see if I can balance myself a little bit better here. Hopefully my head was not in the middle of that. And then... That one's not quite closed all the way, but that's okay. I'll play with that off, off camera and get that to close a little bit better. But then that gets your lobster clasp on, as well as the end of your bracelet. So now... We have a complete flames, nice, warm, and cozy <laughs> bracelet. Thanks so much for watching my flames bracelet tutorial. I hope it made you all nice and warm and cozy. <laughs> now, don't forget, if you need any of the supplies like the storm duos or any of the seed beads that I used, there is that list down below that you can click on that will also have links to go to Potomac's website so that way you can purchase anything that you need. Also, don't forget to take pictures and post them to Facebook because I love to see the different color versions that everybody does outside of what I do. So thanks again for watching and stay tuned for the next video because I know it's going to be a good one.